Uh, today we're going to go over accounts payable payments. We're going to go over uh, check and ACH and wire. And you'll notice those are together because ACH and wire both involve your files being sent to the bank. And they're both very, very similar. So let's get started on uh, setting up our files. You have to do a few different system setups. Uh, first of all, you need to go to your bank branch code. I would suggest a one as the code and a default as a description. The system requires you to put something into the bank branch code. It is not necessarily used when we're processing the different checks. When you talk with your bank, if there is a bank branch code that you have to use, then obviously you would want to set it up for that particular bank. The next thing you're going to have to do is in your system setup, you're going to have to put in your payment methods. You're going to, for this purpose, you would add an APACH and an AP wire if they're two different files. The, these payment methods will be used to help filter at the time of payment. So we're also going to go to the supplier and we're going to set up detail in the supplier so we can select the payment reporting. We can select one invoice per check if that's the way that you would like to do it, especially for an ACH or wire and an ACH payment class code. Then we're going to migrate to the bank remit to box. And I'll make a side note here. If you're on an older version of uh, Epicor, it was not required to fill in the bank or remit to box. In later versions, this area is required. So if you're going to migrate from an older version to Kinetic, we'll need you to fill out uh, that bank information and or the pay to. And I'll show you that screen in just a second. We're going to then enter our payables invoices. And here we're going to pay attention to our payment method. So let's take a look at our um, payment method setup. And some of this will need to be done by your IT department and your bank. You're going to see that we have this payment method is set up as APACH. It is used in AP. The payment method is electronic interface. The uh, the electronic interface that I would cho choose in this case, I just set up a, a dummy one called Wire Funds, and you're going to have an output file name that's going to be a log that's going to the system will throw out to your server where the log files are located. So if you are in accounts payable and you are going to be doing the upload your IT department will have to give you access to those log files because that's where the ACH payment information will wind up. So we talked about setting that up. Now we, we're looking at the supplier screen and you'll notice on the main detail page of the supplier screen, I've selected a payment method of APACH and I've selected the CCD code under ACH payments. There are different codes. The banks require these. The system, when it does the flat file to upload to the bank, will require something in the, CC, in the entry class code. If you are doing a regular AP check, that wouldn't matter for the ACH payments. And we could pick an AP payment method of AP checks um, for this supplier. So you have a lot of flexibility. Just because you mark the supplier as an APACH or an APA, AP check doesn't matter. You can change that selection when you input the invoices. So now uh, let's look at the bank. And this screen is not very intuitive necessarily. So we can pick our AP payment method. And you notice that I've got this drop down box uh, that's showing the different payment types that we have in the system. So I can have an APACH, I can have a check payment, I can have an electronic payment, a physical check, AP wire. This will be set up according to how you run your particular company. In the middle column, the bank account 
This is where you would put the traditional bank account for your supplier. You'll notice that I picked a bank branch code of one. And then under the IBAN account code, I put XXX. This is where you could put the routing number. You can also put it under the bank identifier, but the system will look for the routing number under the IBAN account code. On the right-hand side, we fill in the pay to information. So if you're going to write a check, you want to make sure that the pay to information is filled out. On the right hand side, you can put the supplier's bank address if you choose. It's not necessary for the ACH file to upload, but it could be handy for information down the road. So if you don't get that information, it's not critical. Uh, just know that you may have to look for it from the supplier. So let's put in an invoice. And most of you um, are probably in AP and or accounting. So you know how to put an invoice into the system. We're going to put on the invoice header, we're going to locate the, a the payment method for the invoice. Notice I can change this, no, even though this supplier was set up for ACH payments, I can change it to an AP check payment at the time I'm entering the invoice. So it's very handy as, as we move forward with this payment. So now I can run a payment proposal report. I can run this by all these different types. And remember, I'm in a test database, so I we have lots of different things that we put into the system just to play with. You can uh, do whatever you would like in your particular system, but notice that I have the different, the AP ACH, the AP wire, uh, AP check payment are all types that I can select. So you would select whatever you want to see in your report and then hit OK. This is what the payment proposal report looks like. This is something that I would assume that uh, whoever is approving the AP check run and or AP payments would uh, want to see for your payment proposals. Notice I picked all three for this report. I picked a due date of September 5th and it tells me what the gross payment is, who the supplier is, and tells me what I'm going to be pulling out when I when I actually pay these invoices. When we pull in the payment, we do have to pull in separate payment runs, right? Because we're not going to pay an AP wire or an AP ACH in the same run as we're going to pull an AP check. So in this particular case, I made one one group which shows that uh, we are going to do the AP checks. And notice that I just put some test information in there. This is just like you would do a normal check run. So we put the payment in there with the, with the header, and then we have the invoice payments that I selected. The outcome of that is two different things. First, we're going to see the check. This would be the normal check that you see on the top left. Um, obviously, it's not customized. It's just the canned out of the box check formatting. And the check is written for 1070. And you notice that I get a payment entry list. And this will show me where the, the check run is going to be posted. Most of you, I'm sure, know how to do this. But let's talk about if we're going to do something different. So this time, we're going to do an AP uh, payment entry. And notice that I've picked a payment method of AP electronic payment. This means that checks will not print out. Instead, I'm going to wind up with a flat file that's going to be on the server. I'm going to then select the invoices. And I'm going to, when I, when I click on Select Invoices the, on the top part of the screen, the bottom part of the screen, I'm going to change that all payment methods to, in this case, I picked AP Wire or I could pick AP ACH. I'm going to pick the invoices that are marked specifically for this particular run. 
So here I'm going to say process the payments and notice that my check number is now five bazillion zeros one. That's because uh, the, the system still requires some kind of payment number. You can change that default number if you choose to by overriding the payment, but you want a different sequence number so that it keeps it different from and separate from your AP check payments. Marking down that it's a payment due date. And now if you take a look, I'm saying print out a remittance form with this so that I can then send this to my supplier. And it's telling you that in this particular case, the bank export file name is going to go to that particular location in the system. Once I have the process, the payments, I can look at my payment entry list, which you see on the bottom left, and you'll see that it's still going to my cash account and my accounts payable trade. There is no difference unless you have a different account for ACHs. You'll notice that in the payment entry edit list, if you look towards the middle of the screen of the payment entry list, look in the middle, You'll notice that I said that this is an ACH wire. That's what I used, and it's got the name and the information. This is what the remittance advice out of the box looks like. This we can, just like you can, send any kind of electronic information like an invoice to your suppliers. This can be set up to be sent automatically to your supplier when you do an ACH or you do a wire. IT will need to set up the parameters using the interface specifics. We are not going to go into the uh, interface and the flat file. It doesn't allow us to do that in the test database, but IT will understand what a flat file is. You'll get the specifications from your bank, which may be different based on whether or not you have a wire that you're sending out or if you're sending out an ACH and you'll have to work with your bank until that flat file works for their upload. Every bank has different specifications and so it's very difficult to show you one particular thing, but there is a default in the system that IT can use to start the process. Just make sure and give us a call. If you're having issues, we'd love to help you. Uh, we do have a staff that can help you with the bank import, the ACH files. So just give us a call if you need help. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon.